Hey guys, what are you all today? So yeah, in today's video we'll be doing the Friday games for round two of Super Uppy Trans Tasman. So yeah, this week uh, we'll be talking about the Hurricanes versus the Rebels, as well as Western Force versus the Hollanders. So yeah, starting off with the Hurricanes versus Rebels, you know, this should be a very interesting game to watch, obviously, with the Hurricanes coming back from an impressive away victory over the Warthogs. You know, it was a very high-scoring uh, game, so for them to get a victory away was just a huge uh, bonus for them, really, and to get that bonus point as well. But yeah, for the Rebels, on the other hand, yeah, they had a, you could say, a devastating loss at home against the Blues. Yeah, they, yeah, they uh, synced... 50 points against them, so it was kind of a devastating one to take uh, if you're a Rebels fan. But yeah, more or less, uh, they'll be looking to get their first one within this competition, and the Hurricanes will obviously be looking to you know maintain their status and winning two games in a row. Uh, the Hurricanes will be playing at home, so they will be playing obviously uh, within Wellington, so they will have home advantage, and we'll see how that goes to play. But yeah, more or less, uh, here are the lines I'll see for both sides. I'll run them by with you guys, tell you what I think about them, and yeah, um, I'll give more attention to it afterwards. So obviously with the Hurricanes, you do the likes of uh, Shavery Numia as well as Tyrell Mo Lomax within that proper position. And then you do have the likes of Cameron Orr as well as um, Elof uh, within those props for the Rebels. So if I had to say who actually wins that battle, I'm actually going to edge it towards the Hurricanes. Uh, I would have actually edged it towards the Rebels within this position, uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I just think they got really outdone by the Blues from last week's uh, game, and particularly from Carl Tumalafe. It just shows that, you know, the lot of... They were able to like you know really just win a lot of penalties through that scrum. So yeah, I think the Hurricanes. Uh, I have a feeling they can do the same thing towards them. So yeah, and that in my eyes, I just think that they would win that battle for sure. So then moving on to the hooker. So obviously Dan Coles is your hooker for the Hurricanes, and he's captain of course for them. So we'll see how he does with that position. He will be facing the likes of Jordan Uwesi, who you could say is an up and coming uh, hooker. You could say for Australia, and, and definitely has you know some potential to actually be the next big hooker. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, that'll, that'll, be a good, that'll be a good battle there, but again, I'm going to base it off Super Epic Experience and give it towards Dan Coles. So anyway, moving on to the lock positions, you know, it's going to be a good battle in the sense where you have the likes of Blackwell as well as Scrapton. Good combination there, you know, with, with one with Super Epic, a lot of Super Epic Experience, and the other one, you could say an up-and-coming lock with Blackwell. But they will be facing the likes of uh, Lotea as well as Trevor Hosea within those uh, two locking positions. So it's going to be an interesting battle there, but I'm actually going to give it again to the... Um, to the Hurricanes, it's just it's just one of those where I think the Hurricanes really just have a really decent you know four pack in my opinion, and they really just have a lot of good young players up and coming. So yeah, for that reason, I'm gonna give it to the Hurricanes. So anyway, anyway, moving on to the loose forwards, obviously for both sides. You know, with the Hurricanes, you do have the likes of Reed Prince up as well as Dubisi Karifi and Devin Flanders. So that makes up that loose forward trio there. But they will be facing the likes of you know Michael Wells, Josh Kearney, as well as Nazarani, who's actually returned from this game uh, from last week. He just wasn't available last week. So it will be a good battle, um, I'd say, between Devin Founders and uh, Nazarani. And I normally would have just given this straight away towards the Hurricanes, but I'm actually going to say a draw uh, within this uh, competition just because I think Nazarani's return makes it you know a bit more interesting within that uh, battle. But yeah, um, overall, yeah, uh, I'd say draw from those positions. So moving on to the backs for both sides, yeah. So obviously with those 9-10 combinations, you do have the likes of Jonathan Tomateri, uh, uh, as well as Orban Ledger, who was actually um, you know, covering again for Ruben Love. You actually got injured within, what, the third minute, I believe, within the last week's game against the Wartar. So hopefully he gets, a, you know, hopefully he returns soon. Like, let me know in the comments if you know how long he's out for, if it's only, you know, short-term injury, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, they will be facing the likes of, you know, Joel Powell, obviously with that, you know, a lot of super epic experience there um, from that nine nine position, but they are putting up Carter Gordon within that ten position. So it's a very interesting one, and you could say a risk in that sense of not playing Matt Tamuo there. But we'll see how that goes because obviously they have to make switches within those backline places. But yeah, very interesting uh, call there. But yeah, I, I think I'm gonna, I'm, again I'm gonna probably give it to, towards the Hurricanes. I just think that combination with Tom and Terry as well as Auburn Ledger seems a lot more sufficient and have a lot more chemistry together. I was very impressed by Ledger last week as well. He he really got me. Yeah he. He, he made some good plays, actually. He was very creative with his uh, kicking as well. So, anyway, moving on to the center. So, obviously, for the Hurricanes, you do have the likes of Lem Mappe returning for the side. Obviously, this is the first time he's actually going to be playing for the Hurricanes since he announced that he's going to be leaving them at the at the end of the season. So, yeah, it's a tough one to take as a Hurricanes uh, fan if you are out there. But more or less, yeah, he, I love him as I, – I love the guy. I mean, he's just a battering man in the sense. And he gets so many tries for the Hurricanes. So, yeah, hopefully you can just continue that within this game. Um, his partner in crime, obviously, will be the likes of Billy Proctor, who did actually get two tries from last week's game, so hopefully you can continue that form, really. But they, but they will be facing the likes of Matt Tamula, who obviously is the captain for the Rebels, as well as Campbell McNair. So that's a pretty good combination there, I'd say. Um, I would have actually gone I mean, with the Rebels here, 
Actually, no, ooh, the, the thing is that they both bring different qualities. I actually might rethink that. You know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually say a draw, because I think having Matt Tamua and Campbell McNair, I just think there's more creativity slash playmaking skills there, but with the likes of Leia Malpe and Billy Proctor, I really think that's more of a, you know, they can get a lot more clean breaks, you could say, within this game. So, yeah, I think they have two different attributes uh, within both center, uh, both center pairs. But, yeah, I'm going to say that's a draw within those positions. So, then, moving on to the winger spots for both sides, you know, you do have the likes of... Um, you know, West Goosen as well as Julian Sevilla within those 11 14 spots. So, West Goosen obviously is replacing uh, uh, Rassi from last week's game. And Rassi, uh, he's an up and coming, uh, you know, winger who actually has potential to be an all black. Um, he's definitely one to watch out for. But obviously, West Goosen is, um, you know, replacing him within this game. And yeah, he's just so reliable to have. You know, he always gets you at least a 7 out of 10 performance each week. So, it's good to have him. And obviously, uh, Julian Sevilla, the, uh, the bust, yeah, now he'll be uh, playing again. Yeah, hopefully, he can get more tries than yeah, what he did last week. So, we'll be facing the likes of Marika Corbetti as well as Andrew Kellaway. So, it's, it's going to be an interesting combination there. I think there's a lot more balance, you could say, within those two. Uh, because I think Kellaway brings a lot more speed in that sense. But, like I said before with Lair Mappe, I just think Corbetti brings that more of a battering round. He can really just, you know, d dash around people as well. You know, he gets a lot of uh, defender be uh, defender beatings uh, with that. But, yeah, I'm actually going to edge it towards the Rebels within that position. I just think they have a lot more balance within those two winners. So then moving on to the last position, obviously with that 15 spot, you know, you do have the likes of Jordy Barrett, uh, who's actually been, I'd say he's definitely stuck up at his performance, you could say, within last week's game against the World War Um He will be facing the likes of George uh, George Worth for the Rebels. So I think that's going to be, it's going to be a, he, he's a youngster, I believe. And I haven't, I, uh, to be completely honest, I haven't heard of him. So we'll see how he does. But yeah, again, I'm going to have to put it towards Jordy Barrett. I think he wins most of those contests within that 15 jersey. So yeah, yeah, for that reason, I'm giving towards Jordy Barrett. So anyway, that's kind of it with that, um, with both those lineups. About to say who actually wins that game, um, I'm actually going to edge it towards the Hurricanes. I, I, think, I think they can actually continue it, uh, continue their form and get two wins in a row. But I actually think it's going to be a closer game than what most people predict. I think like, people have it like being at least 15 plus. Um, to be honest, I, I, I just can't see that again happening towards the Rebels. I think they have to at least step up their game. So I'm going to say they'll win. I think the Hurricanes will win this game by at least 12 points, I'd say. So I'm going to say they'll win this game... Well, do I want to say high scoring? Mm. I just can't see the Rebels scoring high scoring. So for that reason, I'm going to say... Actually, you know what? I'll say 32-20. I'll say 32-20 uh, to the Hurricanes. That's my uh, prediction for that game. So we're moving on to the next game, obviously, which is the uh, Western Force here against the Highlanders. So it should be a very interesting game, you know, with the Western Force obviously losing uh, in devastating... I'm not going to say devastating fashion, but in very close circumstances, obviously, with that kick to... If they had that kick, they would have won the game against the Chiefs. But, yeah, they unfortunately lost uh, within the last uh, few seconds of that game. But, yeah, they'll be, um, again, wanting to win. Um, you know, this is their... I think their second and only game at home within this competition. So they will definitely want to, you know, use that to their advantage in that sense. But, yeah, obviously the Highlanders are actually coming back from that victory against the Reds, which was a very good victory, I would say so myself. You know, it was a pretty... Yeah, they did very well, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And this will be obviously their first game away uh, from Dunedin. So, yeah, they'll be hoping to continue their form, really. So, anyway, here are all the sides. Uh, the lines, obviously, from both sides. I'll run the battle with you guys, tell you what I think about them, and, yeah, I'll give my prediction afterwards. So, with the Western Force, you do have the likes of Tom Robinson as well as Santiago Moreno. So, it's a pretty good combination there, and... I thought did brilliantly against the Chiefs last week, so yeah, definitely uh, ones to watch out for. But yeah, they will be facing the likes of Aiden Johnstone as well as Tokalahi. So this is probably going to be one of the key battles from the game, surprisingly, because I think both sets, both teams have really good sets of props there. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I'm actually going to give it towards the Western Force within that position. I just think they have a lot, they can do a lot more with Robinson and Moreno. Just I, I feel a lot more confident with those two than uh, Johnstone as well as. Um, Tokalahi. So yeah, I'm going to go with the Western Force there. So with the next position, obviously, that is the Hookers. You do have the likes of Ash Dixon, who is one of the co-captains for the Highlanders, and he'll be facing the likes of uh, Kateo. So I think I'm going to... I mean, Kateo was actually pretty good, I'd say, for the Western Force, but again, I'm going to have to edge it towards uh, Ash Dixon. You know, he did get two tries to his name uh, within the first week. So yeah, he's, uh, you could say, kind of returning back to his uh, original form from uh, the first Super Bowl Alter competition. So... We'll see how he does up in this game. Hopefully, he can get another try uh, to his name. We'll wait and see. Yeah, for that reason, I'm going to probably edge it towards Ash Dixon with that position. So, anyway, moving on to the, for the locks. You know, the locks is going to be a very interesting, um, probably one of the, I'm not going to say key battles, but it's going to be a very tight contest there, uh, particularly for those lineouts uh, between Jeremy, you know, with Jeremy Frush and Tamani versus 
uh, Perry Perry Parkinson, as well as Bryn Evans. So it's going to be a pretty good contest there. You know, with uh, the old dogs with uh, Jeremy Fresh, uh, Fresh versus Bryn Evans, that'll be a good you know mini battle there. That, if I have to say so myself, but I think I'm going to edge towards the Highlanders in that position just because I think the balance of Perry Perry Parkinson as well as Bryn Evans is a good combination. You know, one with obviously a lot of super rugby experience, but the other you know again being an up and coming um, lock. Uh, for the future, so yeah, um, I'm gonna go with that combination. I, I like more. So anyway, moving on to the loose four pack, you know, the loose four pack is probably one of the key areas from this game for sure, with the likes of Fergus Lee Warner as well as uh, Kane Cotter and Tim Anstey filling in the loose, loose four trio for the Western Force. But you do have the likes of Shannon Bazell actually returning for the Highlanders from this game, as well as Billy Harmon, and then you do have the likes of Hugh Renton who's actually filling in within that eight position, which is odd to see because you know I I like to think Kazuki Yamena has been brilliant for the Highlanders since he's joined, but I think he obviously just needs rest so I can understand that fully. Um, if I had to give actually who wins that battle, I'm going to edge it towards the Highlanders just. Uh, just because the I think Shannon Vizel's you know, return within the side just makes them a lot better within that loose forward uh, pack. So yeah, I'm going to edge it towards the Highlanders from that selection. So anyway, moving on to the backs for both sides. You know, with a 9-10 combination, you do have the likes of uh, Thomas Cupelli as well as Jack McIntyre uh, for... Uh, the Western Force, and they'll be facing the likes of Aaron Smith, who's the other co-captain, of course, for the for the uh, Highlanders, and as well as Mitch Hunt. So, I actually, I mean, I, I want to say this would be a draw, but going off last week's performance, I was very impressed by Mitch Hunt. So, for that reason, I'm going to actually edge towards Aaron Smith, yeah, and Mitch Hunt, and the Highlanders within those two positions. And I, I, I just feel they bring a lot more experience, I have to say, at least, so within Super Rugby level as well. So we move on to the centers. The centers is a very interesting one as well, with the likes of you know uh, Henry Tefu as well as Carl Goodwin, who obviously is the captain uh, for the Western Force, and he was brilliant. Uh, if I say so, uh, you know he was probably my man of the match. I'd say for the for the Western Force from that last week's game against the Chiefs. So hopefully he can just continue his form and you know, kind of uh, be a leader uh, on the field and off. So we'll have to wait and see him for that. But the, but he will be facing the likes of Scott Gregory and Michael Collins. But uh, I'll be completely honest, those two have actually done well together and they've actually formed, you could say, somewhat chemistry within those two positions. So it's an upcoming, you could say, uh, a certain parry there. But I'm actually going to go with the Western Force here just because I think that they have a lot more balance with Tefu being the battering ram and you see Goodwin being more of a playmaking um, center and kind of breaking into the defense, really. So then we meet on to the winners. So for the winners, you do have the likes of um, Offawaya and as well as Richie, uh, Richard Kahui within those two positions for the for the Western Force, but they will be facing the likes of Jordan Narecki as well as C.O. Tompkinson for, yeah, for, I mean, it's an interesting one, because both, uh, actually, both um, four teams for both teams are actually, in my eyes, seen as centers with the likes of Richard Kahui as well as Tompkinson. So it's actually an interesting battle to see you actually win those battles, but I'm, uh, I was actually very impressed by the Western Force, so, hmm, you know what, I'm going to give it to the Highlanders. I, 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 I just feel that like combination of Nareki and Tomlinson, I think, will just do slightly better. And I think Nareki has done really well so far for the Highlanders, so hopefully he can just continue his form, really. So we're moving on to the last one, obviously, with that 15 spot. You do the likes of Rob Kearney, and he'll be uh, for the Western Force, but he will be facing the likes of Sam Gilbert for the Highlanders. And he's he's an up-and-coming uh, fullback and definitely has potential uh, to go far, so we'll have to wait and see how he does. But I think for now, just going off experience, I'm, I'm going to give it towards Rob Kearney and the Western Force. So yeah, anyway, that's kind of it with that uh, with those lineups. If I had to say who actually wins the game, um, see, I want to say the Highlanders could win this game, but I have a sh I have an odd feeling that the Western Force could actually do it. So surprisingly, I'm actually going to say the Western Force could win this, and I I just feel it because they're they're at home as well. I think they're going to do it for the home fans. So yeah, I'll say the I, I think it'll be a close game, and I, I think this will be a high scoring game actually. So I'm going to say this could be, but it'll be, it'll be decided by at least two points. I'll say. So I'll say the scores will be 27 points to 25. Yeah, 27 points to 25 is my final prediction for that game. But yeah, anyway, that's going to do it with, uh, with the video. Just uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, definitely like, comment, and subscribe. And definitely comment below to let me know who you guys think will win the both of the set of games. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys soon. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys uh, next time.